G'day. G'day. Welcome to the second part of talking about trade unions and talking about the philosophy of mass action versus of the line hero. I will mention another book which is very much in defence of the lone hero ethos. And that is Wasp by Eric Frank Russell. Wasp is a very good story of how one person can have big effects on a regime. It's very good to read. I really recommend it. The title comes from a report about how one tiny wasp, one tiny insect, distracts four people in a car so much that the driver crashes the car, wiping out all four people. You think four great big humans, one great big out, um, car, against one tiny wasp. And the wasp basically wins if it survived the incident. Nobody actually knows. But I will say one thing about the book. While it is a very good portrayal of how one person can have big effects on a regime, the actual success in the end is because that one person is backed up by a different society elsewhere who are pushing a completely normal war against the regime against which the person is acting. So it doesn't really prove all that much for the lone hero kind of thing. Lone Hero only wins because he's got much more on his side. But it is a good book, I do recommend it further, along with J.K. Chesterton, his general books, and thinking about these kind of things, along with The Moon Goddess and the Sun by Donald Kingsbury, a lot of science fiction story, like Wasp. These are all recommendable and very useful to read. But now, I'll tell you a funny story, which illustrates part of the Trotskyist mindset I was talking about before, the arrogance, the ideological inflexibility, and the destructiveness. Now this goes back years before I became an official trade union organiser. This has nothing to do with me being a trade union organiser later on officially, nor does it have to, anything to do with my work later on. But when I went to uni the very first time, I was working full time at the same time to support myself because I had no other means of support. It didn't really work out because for two years of trying to work full time and study full time, you run into problems like exhaustion, like complete exhaustion. So I had to stop there and only went back to university much, much later on in my life. But while I was at this uni, I got a job. And that on the uni itself, which really helped. And as part of the general cleaning staff of the restaurants, the cafeterias on campus, and the various other public facilities on campus, was not a great time. We were dreadfully underpaid, conditions were bad. So I started trying to get people to join a particular trade union. The trade union most suited to such general areas of work, and those facilities on that campus. A Trotskyist uni student, yeah, that's right, one of these little rich boys who had nothing better to do with his time, than to join a political movement which said that he and others who thought exactly the same were absolutely right and everybody else was wrong. He decided I was the enemy. The enemy. Why? I'd never met him before. Well, because I was trying to 
get workers to join a trade union, therefore us trying to improve their lot gradually. And anybody who tried to improve the lot of workers generally and gradually was an enemy to the Trotskyists who believed only in instant world revolution and all that hideously off the planet stuff. So, one day there was a big party in one of the uni buildings. It was a big party, it had a band and everything, but you had to pay a small price to get in. Even better, the company who make Pernod, the drink, P-E-R-N-O-D, Pernod, pronounced Pernod, uh, were giving out free drinks, basically. They were giving out little vouchers at the door for one free Pernod and lime, one free Pernod and lemonade, whatever, to anybody who'd take one. And this was Australia, and Australians really don't like the taste of anise in their drinks or in their food. Not at that time, anyway. So, not many really wanted these free vouchers. So I started collecting vouchers from all my friends. And said, look, don't throw it away, give me your bloody voucher. And if you think that's a wee bit whatever, well, I didn't really didn't have much money at that time. And they could stop wasting their vouchers and I could have a good time on free Pernod and lime, free Pernod and lemon. Because I was not prejudiced against anise, against even in alcohol. So I collected a whole lot of these vouchers and I was happy, having a fairly groovy time, beginning to get full of Pernod and lime, Pernod and lemonade and whatnot. And I met this woman there. She was together with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend was a bit of a silent, useless little person. And he kept on staying in the background and not saying much. For some reason or other, I have no idea how, the woman and I ended up on the balcony of the building, just outside the party, playing chess. How or why that happened, I'm not quite sure. I won about three games fairly quickly, maybe four games reasonably quickly. And then the Pano and Nimes and Pano and Lemonade started having a big effect on me because they had about 15 to 20 inside of me by that stage. She started winning in a fairly big way and she won about five games or so on. During the course of our games, this horrible bloke I've never actually met before in my life won this up to me. And I found out later that this was the Trotskyist who decided I was the enemy. And he tries to insult me and then he tries to have a swing at me. And it's a bit off. So I grab him, boom. I have a bit of a swing at him myself. And then I take him and I shove him, more or less, away. He goes away, dissuaded from having direct action, which is a political in-joke, on me. His direct action was a failure and he wandered away. However, this incident would feed into the very next incident. Because while we were playing chess on the balcony, there are a whole lot of Hell's Angels gathering outside. And they wanted into the party, but they didn't feel like paying the entry fee. They really didn't feel like it. They were genuine Hell's Angels, bikies. The genuine article. We're talking metal chains, we're talking knives, we're talking at least one handgun among all of them. That was dreadfully illegal in Australia. And they were gathering outside the building, in the dark, in a group of about 30 Hells Angels, and they were arguing with the security guards. The security guards were refusing to let them in. They had nothing to do with the unit, 
Somebody had tipped them off about a party on campus. They decided to gate crash the party. Things really took off from there. I'll stop here for a moment and continue in the next clip after this. Sorry about that, but that's to stop YouTube from slapping advertising on these clips. Many thanks for listening, and please do listen to the very next clip, which contains the main story. Thanks. Bye.